Good evening, everyone. Sorry about that brief technical glitch. Um, my name is Mike Milstein. I'm the deputy director here for the Office of Community Policing at the Chicago Police Department. And tonight I'll be serving as a moderator for this evening's webinar on the Chicago Police Department's um, Bureau of Internal Affairs and Accountability Policies uh, regarding complaints, investigating allegations of misconduct, discipline, accountability mechanisms, and transparency of those processes and policies. Tonight's webinar is the second in a series of webinars that CPD has integrated into its engagement and reform efforts to increase transparency into its policy creation process, operations, and an additional layer or mechanism for community engagement and feedback. As we proceed through the webinar this evening, you will hear more about opportunities for input on three policies that we will be discussing tonight. CPD is posting three policies today for public comment. However, CPD has received some questions and feedback from the community that we will cover tonight in our webinar. As we move forward through the webinar tonight, if you have questions, please place them in the chat, which will be monitored. And towards the end of the webinar, there will be time for questions and answers to those questions um, in the chat that are asked of the speakers. If your question is not already answered by the presentation or during the questions and answers, the overall themes collected from the questions will be answered and posted on the CPD reform web website, which is publicly accessible. Those answers will be posted within seven days of tonight's webinar. If anyone poses a question regarding any ongoing investigations or any individual internal affairs matter, those questions will be addressed offline and BIA will discuss how to handle those types of questions in the webinar this evening. We will have a series of speakers tonight to share more information about the webinar and the accountability process. Um, for those of you who also may need it, we do have two um, ASL interpreters on the line tonight. We will have them spotlighted throughout the presentation. Once we transition to screening, the, the sharing our screen, you will still be able to see them um, and you can adjust your screen to pin them on your screen so that you have access to them at all times. Um, the first speaker tonight is the Executive Director of the Office of Constitutional Policing, Robert Boyk. Executive Director Boyk, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you, Mike. Good evening, everyone. My name is Robert Boyk. As Mike said, I'm the Executive Director of the Office of Constitutional Policing and Reform at the Chicago Police Department. And I'd like to start out by welcoming, welcoming you all here this evening. Uh, appreciate you all taking the time out of your schedule to join us tonight and really to uh, participate in uh, uh, providing you with a broad overview of our account accountability structures here uh, within the city of Chicago uh, to briefly go over the three uh, policies that we're going to highlight this evening um, and to give you some additional context for those policies. Uh, we, uh, I think it's important to note that we have posted these policies for public comment on our website uh, earlier today. These policies will be uh, open for comment for a 30-day period. We are hoping that tonight's webinar will provide you some context for uh, how to participate in that process uh, and the types of feedback that we're specifically looking for on the policy but all feedback is really welcome. Um, so we will go ahead and do that. And I also think it's important to note that at the conclusion of that 30-day comment process, CPD will be reviewing all of the comments. We will make determinations about what changes need to be made to the policy as a result of that feedback. And ultimately, we will provide a culminating document uh, and also post that document on our website so that you can see uh, where we started, uh, what comments we received, and what comments we adopted in the uh, final version of the policies. Uh, so with that, I will turn it over to my colleagues, but again, just want to thank everyone again for your participation here this evening. Uh, can't tell you um, how much we appreciate it. And with that, I'll turn it back to you, Mike. Thank you, Executive Director. Our next speaker is the Chief of the Bureau of Internal Affairs, Karen Cano. Um, Chief, I know you'll be providing an overview of how different accountability components in the city work um, and the high level overview of the Bureau of Internal Affairs office. 
Um, two big questions that we'd like you for, to answer during the presentation are with the various city accountability components. The first is who decides to investigate a case and who investigates what? How is that determined? And ultimately, where do they intersect if they do? Um, and the second question is, why does it sometimes seem like it takes a long time to get closure on these type of cases? How long should it take? Um, there may be some additional questions for you after your responses and presentation, but I'd now like to welcome you, Chief, um, for your presentation. Thank you very much, Mike. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. I'm Karen Kono, the Chief of Internal Affairs for the Chicago Police Department. This evening's webinar is intended to create awareness about three important CPD policies. And these policies govern how CPD conducts misconduct investigations. I believe, Mike, that the, the important questions you raised will be answered during the course of tonight's webinar. Our goal is that the policies create understanding and inspire trust in the investigative process. Integrity and legitimacy must be fostered through a culture of accountability at CPD. Misconduct investigations play an important role in that process of creating legitimacy. We need your input. The material provided today should help you evaluate our revised policies. CPD is posting three important policies for community input. These three policies establish foundational components of our process and describe the beginning of the complaint process and the investigation. Specifically, G0801 identifies guiding principles and explains the disciplinary systems components. G080102 addresses the initiation of a complaint and how those um, complaints are received in process and accepted by the Chicago Police Department. SO801 describes how investigators are assigned their cases and the beginning procedures for conducting an investigation. Let's talk a little bit about the overview of the city's complaint and disciplinary process. There are three primary entities that are involved in complaint and disciplinary process for the Chicago Police Department. They are the Chicago Police Board, the Civilian Office of Police Accountability, commonly referred to as COPA, and the Chicago Police Department Bureau of Internal Affairs. The Police Board is a civilian commission. It stands separate and apart from COPA and CPD. It's governed by its own ordinance that makes, and it makes decisions on matters that CPD and COPA refer to the board. The police board conducts hearings on serious disciplinary cases and the police board decides the outcome of these cases, including the penalty. The Civilian Office of Police Accountability, COPA, is an independent standalone civilian agency empowered to conduct investigations. COPA receives all complaints that are made throughout the system. They review all complaints. They cycle through COPA for a jurisdictional decision, meaning who will be charged with conducting the investigation. COPA has their own city ordinance that governs their authority, their duties and responsibility. Lastly, when COPA completes a case that they've investigated, they return it to the Chicago Police Department for review and implementation of their recommendations. The Bureau of Internal Affairs at the Chicago Police Department has the authority and responsibility to conduct investigations into police misconduct. We generally investigate every complaint that's not retained by COPA because it falls outside of their area of responsibility. These complaints are investigated by internal affairs personnel or specifically trained sergeants that work in our police districts. BIA ultimately, CPD and BIA ultimately keep track of all records and files related to misconduct investigations. And we'll be going more deeply into CPD, BIA's role throughout the presentation. 
Next, we want to talk a little bit how, about how complaints are sorted at the beginning of the process. This graphic depicts how complaints are assessed and sorted for investigation. All complaints are accepted, and please know that every complaint is important to us. I want to draw your attention to the top middle portion of this graphic, where you will see symbols outlined in black ink. Please note that misconduct complaints are accepted by mail, in person, by website, and by phone. Anonymous complaints are absolutely accepted. Regardless of the manner in which the complaint is made, it is evaluated by COPA for a decision of which, invest, which agency will conduct the investigation. This process is illustrated by the funnel shaped symbol labeled COPA. Every complaint comes through the COPA system for assignment. Depending on the nature of the complaint, COPA will keep it or refer it to CPD. COPA generally investigates bias-based verbal abuse, allegations of coercion, injuries that have resulted um, while someone is in custody. They have the authority to investigate domestic violence, claims of excessive, excessive force involving such things as a firearm discharge or use of a taser. COPA has the authority to investigate improper search and seizures that violate the Fourth Amendment of the US Constitution. Additionally, COPA can investigate patterns or practice of misconduct that they detect at the Chicago Police Department. And they also investigate the unlawful denial or access to counsel by pers of persons in custody. CPD investigates policy and procedure violations that may constitute such things as conduct unbecoming, inattention to duty, failure to take proper police action, uniform violations and misuse of department equipment. CPD also conducts in um, investigations of misconduct that involve substance abuse, including drugs and alcohol, and misuse of the um, medical role, medical leave policy, and violations of the requirement to live in the city of Chicago. Additionally, CPD Internal Affairs does have the authority to investigate criminal misconduct by members such as theft or domestic violence. Let's talk a little bit about the stages of a misconduct complaint. Let's talk a little bit about initiation. Initiation is when a complaint is created, it is assigned a unique tracking number that is provided to the complainant in the initiation phase is a, includes that determination phase of when COPA decides who will investigate it. After the initiation phase, the investigation phase continues until it reaches a conclusion. Lastly, when an active investigation is complete, a post-investigation phase of review and implementation begins. A little bit more about the initiation phase. It's worth saying again that all complaints are welcome and accepted, including anonymous complaints. Any member of the public is welcome to make a complaint and department members also make complaints. Both COPA and internal affairs accept all complaints. Keep in mind the many ways we've described to make a complaint and know that COPA will then decide which agency investigates your complaint. We want to make clear that there are many ways and three agencies by which you can interact to file a complaint. For example, the Chicago Police Department accepts complaints by calling 911 and requesting that a CPD supervisor respond to your complaint, your location to take your complaint. Members of the public can call 311 and ask to make a complaint about police misconduct. People are also welcome to visit a police district in person to speak with a supervisor and make a complaint. Next, COPA has many ways to make complaints. COPA has a 24 hour complaint hotline. They accept mail correspondence at their mailing address. 
You can visit the COPA offices in person and people are welcome to use COPA's website to make a complaint, including anonymous complaints on the COPA website. Lastly, the third involved city agency is the Office of Inspector General. The Office of Inspector General has a 24 hour hotline. People are welcome to email the Inspector General at reportcorruption at igchicago.org or by visiting the Inspector General's website, which also accepts anonymous complaints. Next, now that we've talked about the um, initiation phase, we're gonna talk a little bit about the investigative process. We're now talking specifically about how the Chicago Police Department handles complaints that have been referred to them by COPA. The CPD intake section receives complaints and conducts an investigation, a preliminary investigation into every complaint we receive. During this phase, we're checking to ensure that time sensitive evidence is, pre is preserved. We're checking to see if the identity of the accused is known or unknown and beginning to filter through that information. During this phase, the intake team will reach out to the complainant and begin to communicate with them about our process. The intake team assigns a dedicated investigator to your case. The investigator may work at internal affairs or maybe a sergeant that is specifically trained for this process and they work at a police district. The investigator will continue this process. They gather and evaluate evidence. They talk to the complainants more, get further information, and perhaps schedule an in-depth interview with the complainant. The investigators interview witnesses and they interview the department member who is accused of the misconduct. The investigator makes credibility determinations and concludes their case by making findings and recommendations for penalty. Now the investigator procedure is not um, fully defined in every policy you'll see this evening but the fundamental policies and procedures are outlined in the posted policies this evening. Every investigative procedure that is not described in the policy this evening will soon be posted as we are reviewing and revising them now. A complete investigation results in findings. That's a determination based on the evidence as to whether or not misconduct has occurred. Investigative findings include sustained. That means the investigator has determined by a preponderance of the evidence that the misconduct has occurred. The next possible finding is not sustained. And that is when it's determined that there is insufficient evidence to prove by a preponderance of evidence that the complaint happened. Lastly, there's the finding of unfounded. This is when the investigation reveals that the complaint is false or not factual based on clear and convincing evidence. Lastly, the finding of exonerated. Exonerated means that the conduct did occur by clear and convincing evidence, it's determined to have been lawful and proper under current police policies. If an investigator determines that the complaint is sustained, meaning misconduct has occurred, the investigator also then recommends that discipline be imposed. The penalties for discipline at the Chicago Police Department range from reprimand to suspension to separation from the police department by that police board process we discussed earlier. The next stage we wanna talk about is the post investigative stage. This occurs after the active investigation has concluded. Every investigation is reviewed extensively. Lieutenants and higher ranking members of the CPD command staff review every investigation 
the they review the findings and the penalties to ensure completeness, accuracy, thoroughness, and fairness. Now, how long does it take to reach the review phase of our process? That varies from case to case. Some investigations are quite straightforward and direct, while some are quite complex and have very complicated allegations. The length of the investigative time also depends on the availability of the complainant and their willingness to be part of our process. Witness interviews must be conducted and the accused members are also interviewed. The volume and nature of the evidence that must be assessed and collected is also a determining factor in the length of our investigations. Lastly, while this review period does add additional time to our process, it is critical to ensure the fairness of the outcome and any penalties. Please know that complainants are welcome to ask questions of their investigator of where they are in this process. Complainants are informed of the outcome of their investigation as well by the Internal Affairs Division. Complainants can look up the status of their complaint by their unique tracking number at any time during this process on the CPD website. And lastly, all misconduct investigate, all completed misconduct investigative files are maintained by BIA on behalf of CPD. Thank you, Mike. Thank you so much, Chief. Um, I'd now like to introduce um, our next speaker, who is Lieutenant Michael Kapistanik from the Office of the Research and Development Team, who will provide additional information and overview about each of the three policies that we are discussing tonight. Lieutenant Kapistanik. Thank you, Deputy Director. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mike Kapistanik, and I'm currently assigned as the commanding officer of the Research and Development Division Policy and Procedure Section. We have the responsibility for the creation, publication, and management of CPD directives and policies. I would like to thank you for taking the time today to participate in this conversation and engagement process and for the opportunity to present today. I look forward to continuing the engagement on these accountability policies for CPD. Today, I will present the three draft policies that are included in this engagement process. As the chief has said, these three policies focus on the foundational standards of CPD's complaint and disciplinary system, the guiding principles for every CPD officer, the start of the complaint process, and the assignment of the investigation. CPD's entire complaint and disciplinary system, as outlined earlier, is very extensive. It would not be very effective to tackle the entirety of CPD's accountability system in a single review. Therefore, during this engagement, we are focusing on these three foundational policies to establish a base from which all of CPD's other accountability processes will be built. The three policies we're discussing today are significant improvements to the existing CPD policies and accountability standards. CPD currently has policies in place covering the basic accountability principles to which CPD officers are held accountable today. However, these proposed drafts are significantly revised to identify specific responsibilities, clarify obligations, and explicitly outline expectations consistent with the requirements of the consent decree, as well as current research and best practices. These draft policies have all been provided to the independent monitoring team and the Illinois Office of the Attorney General. They've been provided for the review and comment process as required by the consent decree. The conversations with the independent monitoring team and the Office of the Attorney General have been ongoing. This is to ensure compliance with the consent decree requirements and best practices. These conversations will continue during this community engagement effort to ensure CPD is being responsive to the community feedback and reflecting the comments we're hearing. Moving forward, CPD will continue to revise these drafts based on the community input provided and continuing the conversations with the monitoring team and the attorney general. 
BPD's Research and Development Division, as well as the Bureau of Internal Affairs and other CPD divisions, will review and analyze all the feedback and public comments submitted through this engagement process. Upon that review and analysis, the final drafts that reflect these engagement efforts and are responsive to the concerns that we hear will again be submitted to the IMT and the OAG for review. CPD will then post these final draft policies for additional public feedback prior to publication and implementation. We expect this to occur early December this year. CPD aims to publish these three policies by the end of 2021. The first policy we will be discussing is the complaint and disciplinary system. This directive outlines the overall accountability structure, including but not limited to the guiding principles, the foundational policies, and the general responsibilities. This policy is the parent policy. The other two policies we'll be discussing and posting, in addition to all other CPD's accountability policies, all relate back to this general order. This general order is the foundation. This parent policy serves not just as an introduction, but as a useful reference and the foundation for all these related policies. This first general order, G0801, the complaint and disciplinary system, establishes the overall accountability framework and the complaint and disciplinary system for CPD. This includes the electronic case management system where all investigative files are housed. The guiding principles are also outlined here. They are the overarching goals for CPD's accountability structure. These principles are foster trust and provide department members and the community a voice in the complaint and disciplinary process. Improve the effectiveness of department operations while promoting employee safety, morale, and commitment to department's, the department's vision, mission, and core values. Openness to accepting and investigating all public complaints by providing various opportunities and methods to submit complaints against CPD officers and requiring CPD to receive, accept, and document all these submitted complaints. And to provide CPD officers with due process while still holding them accountable for their conduct and exercise of their authority with professionalism and integrity. These are the specific foundational policies that underline and support the complaint and disciplinary process. A commitment to fairness and integrity in the investigation. A commitment to protect all the rights of the involved, including members of the public and the accused department members. And a commitment to foster trust in the entire accountability process. The duties of all CPD members, regardless of rank, are also established in this policy. These duties include an affirmative duty to report misconduct, known or observed misconduct, and a prohibition on refusing to accept, discouraging reporting, or providing false or misleading information about filing a complaint. There's also a duty to cooperate with investigations, including truthfully answering questions relating to the investigation and their official duties. There's also a duty not to interfere with or undermine an investigation. This includes refusing to answer questions, being truthful, being untruthful during the investigation, colluding with others to undermine the investigation, or intentionally withholding requested evidence. These are all prohibited acts in this policy. And then there's a prohibition on retaliation, intimidation, coercion, or adverse actions against any person who reports misconduct or in any way cooperates with an investigation. Please note that this directive also addresses the sworn affidavit requirement. That is requiring a person to affirm in writing their beliefs in the truth of the allegation. However, recent state law and the new union contracts um, CPD has with their bargaining units requires us to continue to review and respond by updating those sections accordingly. And the next drafts that will be posted will include those revisions. Other specific responsibilities are outlined in this directive as well. And these apply to the overall complaint and disciplinary process. This includes the superintendent's role in discipline, 
and CPD's Bureau of Internal Affairs official duties. And this includes a duty to publicly publish quarterly and annual reports about their investigations. And the CPD's duty to analyze the disciplinary process annually through audits. We also want to specifically draw your attention to the glossary that's included with this policy. By necessity, the language and accountability directives can be a bit dense. So we have tried to provide very clear definitions that will help the user understand these terms. Two of the terms we want to highlight are log number and reporting party or subject. A log number is a broad term that includes misconduct complaints. So when we refer to log numbers or speak of log numbers in the policy or in these presentations, it is truly what you are familiar with, the misconduct complaints. Reporting party or subject is what's commonly referred to as the complainant. The next policy we will be discussing is the complaint initiation policy. This directive outlines the beginning of the process, which means how the public and department members make misconduct complaints and how the department receives and accepts those complaints. The primary purpose of this policy is to establish CPD's openness to receiving and documenting complaints of misconduct. CPD, CPD provides the public with numerous opportunities and methods, even anonymously, even through a third party, to submit complaints and report allegations of misconduct. These mechanisms are what the chief described earlier. They could be in person by calling 311, calling 911, by going to the website, either COPA's or CPD website. CPD aims to create an initiation process that's welcoming and free of any barriers to accept complaints from the public. The procedures outlined in this policy also detail the actions CPD members are required to take when they observe or are made aware of possible misconduct. Non-supervisory CPD members are required to notify a supervisor. We want a CPD supervisor to respond to this allegation of misconduct. And then we provide detailed instructions for the supervisor regarding what steps to take. A supervisor must respond to the scene. They must gather as much information as they possibly can. They must fully document that complaint. And they must notify COPA of the complaint within one hour of first receiving the information. The procedures also specifically address the failure to take a complaint or an attempt to discourage a complaint. Both of these are misconduct. If the on-scene supervisor is alleged to be involved in the conduct, they must notify their supervisor who will then perform those duties. This reassignment provides for avoiding any potential conflicts of interest in that initial process in initiating the complaint. This policy continues by outlining the guidelines for the intake and assignment of misconduct complaints. This was covered earlier in the introduction presentation by the chief. It describes COPA's role as receiving and classifying all complaints, as well as identifying which investigations to retain and which investigations to provide to CPD for investigation, consistent with their authority for the MCC. It also outlines CPD's role in the assignment process, including the duty to timely communicate with the complainant upon receipt of the investigation. Finally, as the chief had mentioned in her presentation, this directive describes the various ways the complainant is able to track the status of their complaint, including contacting CPD's Bureau of Internal Affairs in person or by telephone, or by contacting C uh, COPA in person by telephone or online. The phone numbers, addresses, websites, and all that contact information is included in our policy for reference. The final policy we'll be discussing today is the Complaint and Disciplinary Investigators and Investigations Policy. This directive outlines the foundational procedures to help ensure the integrity of the process, including the selection of investigators, the assignment of investigators, the training that they receive, and the investigative benchmarks and timelines. 
The purpose of this policy is to establish the foundational investigative procedures to help ensure the integrity of the investigation. As the chief had mentioned earlier, the investigation involves many steps and those policies are still being developed. What this policy does is it sets the foundation to ensure those investigations are done appropriately. The goal of CPD's accountability system is to thoroughly, fairly, timely, and efficiently investigate all complaints of misconduct, whether from internal or external sources. Resolution of complaints through a fair and prompt investigative process supports the legitimacy of CPD and the effectiveness of CPD by fostering the community's trust. To this end, the foundation of CPD's accountability system is having qualified and dedicated investigators, both assigned to the Bureau of Internal Affairs EIA investigators, or at the unit level, accountability sergeants. However, these policies are designed to ensure consistency in actions and investigations, no matter where the investigator is assigned. Investigators are specifically selected for their role. CPD sets minimum qualifications to be a CPD investigator, including time as a supervisor or as a detective, medical attendance standards, and significant limits on investigations for misconduct initiated for those candidates. The Chief of the Bureau of Internal Affairs has the final authority to recommend and approve a candidate for assignment as an investigator, looking at these minimum qualifications. Whether you're in a BIA investigator, an accountability sergeant, or another member of CPD, all of us have a professional and ethical obligation to maintain confidentiality. CPD members who improperly disclose any information concerning a log number investigation will be subject to discipline. Complaint and misconduct investigations forwarded by COPA to CPD to investigate are either assigned to a BIA investigator or an accountability sergeant. This policy establishes that criteria for that designation between the assignments. This designation and the criteria can include the seriousness of the offense, the number of members involved, the ranks of the members involved, and any of the accused members' previous discipline history. For investigations that take place in the district or unit level by accountability sergeants, there is a specific review and approval process through the accused member's chain of command to the Bureau of Internal Affairs for review. Again, these policies are designed to ensure consistency in actions and investigations, no matter where the investigation is assigned. The identified investigation notification and timelines are also provided, and they provide timeliness benchmarks for the completion of the investigation, the communication with complainants, and other key milestones throughout the process. Within 72 hours of being assigned an investigation, the investigator will make reasonable efforts to contact the complainant to begin the investigation. And then the policy describes benchmarks and timeliness standards for the completion of the investigation themselves before an investigator seeks approval for a time extension. A accountability sergeant doing an investigation at a unit level must, within 90 days, complete that investigation or identify the circumstances which require an extension and receive approval for that extension. Because the complexity of the investigations done by BIA investigations, that standard's at 180 days to identify the circumstances and get approval for any extension. As the chief mentioned, some of these complaints can be very complex and some of the timing can be based on the availability of witnesses and other information. This policy also outlines the training requirements for BIA investigators and the accountability sergeants, who both receive initial and annual in-service training. This comprehensive training includes topics such as complaint intake and the consequences for failing to take a complaint, best practices in procedural justice, implicit bias, and in ethics, the collection of objective, verifiable evidence, investigative skills, including proper communication and interview techniques, 
gathering of objective and objectively analyzing evidence, the proper application of the relevant standards and burdens of proof, and the utilization of the appropriate officers, officer support systems and performance metrics applications. All investigators, both BIA investigators and those unit level accountability sergeants must conduct objective, comprehensive, and timely log number investigations in a fair and impartial manner consistent with the procedures established in these directives and the standards set by CPD. Deputy Director, I'll send it back over to you, sir. Thank you so much, Lieutenant, for that presentation. Um, one of the questions that we actually did receive while, during your presentation is if you could talk a little bit about um, how the department um, receives some of that community input and how the department uses community input to um, integrate it into our review process as we revise the policies. How are we you know, informing the policies with community input? Absolutely, we can speak to that a little bit. These drafts that you see are reflective of a lot of the conversations that BIA has had through the years about the accountability process. These drafts include our research in best practices, what other agencies and what other um, cities are doing. So we put a lot of that into these drafts. A lot of these drafts can, um, contain a lot of the conversations we've had with the independent monitoring team and the Office of the Attorney General to ensure we're in compliance with the standards set forth in the consent decree. So you'll see a lot of that reflected in these drafts. However, this engagement that we're doing now is vitally important. We're going to take the feedback we receive, whether it's the questions in the chat today, whether it's the responses to the survey or comments posted to the website. We will take, review and analyze all of those comments and pull out themes and ideas that should be included in these policies. And what we'll do is we'll incorporate that feedback into the next set of draft policies that get presented again for public comment and to the monitoring team and the attorney general. And when the final policies are published, we'll identify that in a document of where changes were made, um, what comments we heard, and things that CPD might be continuing to do to address these policies. Great, thank you so much, Lieutenant. Um, I now wanna invite Deputy Chief Angel Navales from the Office of Community Policing to talk a little bit about how the community and the public could review these policies, where you can go to find them and how you can provide some of your input on the policies. Uh, Deputy Chief. Thank you, Mike. Good evening. My name is Angel Novales. I'm the Deputy Chief of the Office of Community Policing. I'd like to thank everybody for attending this webinar tonight and for your interest in providing feedback to these policies. We recognize that in order for us to make real, meaningful and positive change for this department, we need to help in partnership with our communities. Tonight, we'd like to invite you and all the residents of the city to review these policies and to share with us your input and feedback on ways they can be improved or revised. Our goal in revising these policies and providing the, commun providing the community an opportunity to offer up input is to ensure CPD has an open, accessible, and transparent accountability process that reflects its responsiveness and needs of a community. These three policies lay the groundwork by providing the guide, guiding principles and foundational policies to help foster trust in CPD's accountability process. They establish initiation procedures that are welcoming and free of barriers to accept complaints from the public. They provide the foundation procedures that help ensure the integrity of the process including the selection of qualified, dedicated investigators. And these foundational policies help to establish the base from which all other CPD accountability policies will be built. So please go to www.chicagopolice.org and select draft policy review, comment on the homepage to see the draft policies and provide your comments. We also have some questions we'd like you to consider as you're reviewing the policies and providing your feedback. Some of those questions are, and we ask that you ask yourself, do the policies convey CPD's commitment to a robust, well-functioning accountability system that fosters public trust? Ask yourself, is, there's more, is there more that CPD can do to convey CPD's commitment to receiving and documenting complaints of misconduct? 
Is there a language or procedure that seems to impede a person's ability to make a complaint? Ask yourself, do these structures instill confidence that complaints of misconduct will be investigated fairly, impartially, and completely? And lastly, please, is there something more that needs to be conveyed? We will post the link to the policies um, and these questions on the chat on CPD's webpage. Finally, at the end of tonight's webinar, we will share with you a link and a survey online where you can provide input on tonight's webinar. We're looking forward for any input you have to make webinars like this more productive and other suggestions for how you can engage the community better. Please do us a favor, help complete that survey. Your feedback is important and it's greatly appreciated. If you have any additional questions or feedback you'd like to provide, please reach out to us by emailing us at community at chicagopolice.org. Thank you again for your willingness to help inform these policies, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you. I turn it back to you, Mike. Thank you so much, Deputy Chief. Um, that concludes our presentation. At this time, we have a couple of questions that have come in. Um, during the registration for the webinar tonight or throughout the presentation that folks have asked um, in the chat. Um, so one of the first questions that I'll ask the panel um, is, um, what happens if a department member observes another department member engaging in some sort of misconduct, but does not report it? So essentially what happens if um, a department member does not follow the policies that were talked about tonight? Thank you, Mike, for the question. Yes, um, it is absolute, it's an absolute duty of every member of the Chicago Police Department to uh, re report misconduct. I think you heard the Lieutenant say every um, non supervisor must report misconduct promptly to a supervisor and every supervisor that becomes aware of misconduct has one hour to obtain an official tracking number and document the complaint of misconduct. Anyone who fails to report misconduct in and of itself violates our policies in our rules. And those who fail to report misconduct are subject to discipline by the police department. Thank you so much, Chief. Um, another question that came in um, was the difference between preponderance versus clear and convincing. Um, is one more than the other? Is someone able to explain a little bit about the difference between preponderance versus clear and convincing? Thank you, Mike. Um, sure. Um, you, I think this is when we talked about the findings um, that we reviewed. And that really means that each finding has a specific amount of proof required if, um, if and when an investigator makes that decision, right? So we talked about a sustained finding requires proof by a preponderance of evidence um, that the, the misconduct has occurred. So preponderance of evidence is how much evidence is necessary. And what preponderance means, it is more likely true than not that the evidence that the misconduct has occurred. Sometimes it's people explain it as um, just reaching 50 more than 50%, any amount more than 50% likely that the misconduct has occurred results in a sustained finding. Clear and convincing is a higher level of evidence. So I think what's important to um, note is that for a complaint to be unfounded or exonerated requires a greater amount of evidence. Um, it means the investigator has found clear and convincing evidence that it's appropriate to say the complaint is false or not factual or that it occurred was and was proper and lawful. So that's a higher standard. Great, thank you so much, Chief. Um, another question is, um, uh, Somebody had asked, once my complaint is assigned, how many investigators will I be talking to regarding my complaint? And will I be dealing with multiple investigators upon assignment of my complaint? Thank you, Mike, that's a good question. Um, yes, it's one investigator is assigned to your complaint. Um, it's a supervisor, um, that work, um, it's a sergeant, 
who is trained specifically to handle your complaint and you are assigned to one dedicated investigator, that's who will be your point of contact at Internal Affairs. Great, thank you so much. Um, another question, will investigators be trained to ask open-ended uh, questions rather than leading questions when they're interviewing officers accused of misconduct? Yes, absolutely. That's a very important investigative um, technique that our investigators are trained to um, you know, listen carefully, objectively, and, and um, ask very open questions um, to solicit the most amount of information that the complainant can provide. And I would note that our investigators um, specifically go through three days of onboard training when they first become a um, an investigator who handles misconduct complaints. And investigative techniques is a big part of that investigative training, including role playing and practice sessions so they understand how to um, conduct open-ended interviews. Great. Um, can you also talk about, Chief, um, some of the reasons or the guiding principles for the separation of complaints for investigators to be assigned to either COPA or BIA? You know, why does that split occur? Um, what are the reasons behind that? Um, sure, it's a couple of reasons. Um, you know, first and foremost, we can, you can, everyone can, should, and um, be rest assured that whether your investigator works in internal affairs or in the district, they are trained for this um, function and they are held to the same standards of all the policies we described tonight, and they are obligated to conduct complete and thorough fair investigations. Generally speaking, the investigators who are, we call them accountability sergeants. They are part of the department's um, culture of accountability, and they um, generally receive slightly less complicated investigations, more straightforward. Maybe there's only one person complaining, um, perhaps there's only one complaint. Um, the person who's accused of the misconduct is most likely a police officer who works in that geographic area. That helps the sergeant um, assess and have access to the area in which the misconduct occurred. And they also have prompt access to other supervisors over that accused officer. But generally speaking, these are complaints that are a little less complicated and a little more straightforward. Got it. Thank you, Chief. Um, just a few more questions, I promise. Um, can you talk a little bit about the transparency process that's handled in internal affairs? You know, how does the public, you know, have any insight into what's going on? You know, what kind of complaints are coming out? How many complaints? That sort of stuff. Sure. Um, thank you. We've worked very hard on our transparency efforts. Um, we are committed to the idea that accountability and transparency go hand in hand. Um, in other words, the public has to know um, and has an absolute right to know what is going on at CPD in regards to accountability for um, acts of misconduct. So um, some of our increased transparency efforts that I'm happy to tell you about is that on the CPD homepage, there's a series of pinned links that describe all of the um, work here being done at Internal Affairs. Um, I can highlight a couple of those things. First, um, there is a way to track the status of your complaint by that unique tracking log number that we described. You enter your log number into a search bar and you, re, um, you can learn the current status of your investigation in the process. Secondly, um, administrative summary reports are published on the department's website, and though, as well as being provided to every complainant. But on the website, you can read the administrative summary reports about our investigation that describe the complaint, the evidence gathered, and the outcome of that investigation. Internal Affairs is now publishing quarterly reports. They are rich with data um, about what's going on here in the aggregate and um, with some specific information as well. We are subject to audit. I think uh, Lieutenant Kapistanik mentioned that. We're subject to audit by a unit separate and apart from internal affairs. And lastly, we distribute printed material um, 
brochures and posters are available in every police district. Those brochures, informational brochures, come in four languages. In all of our um, printed material have a QR code that will link you directly to the BIA public page so you can make a complaint or compliment an officer. Thanks, Jeep. And then the last question tonight um, that we have time for is, if someone has filed a complaint with BIA, how can they um, get feedback or updates on the complaint that they filed? What kind of feedback does BIA provide to the community or to the complainant throughout that process? Or how can someone check the status of their complaint? I think again, um, a couple of ways. One, every complainant knows the identity and the contact information of their investigator. Um, that's the best, most direct way to contact your investigator and um, find out what's going on. You can also express any additional concerns to your investigator, something that you may have recalled that you didn't convey in the first place. Secondly, um, you can um, also contact um, the BIA intake sec section. Um, they are also our analytical section and everyone gets a letter um, describing how to contact BIA intake and analytical section and you can contact them for more information about the status of your complaint. And lastly, I encourage everyone to look up their log number on the accountability um, webpage of the Chicago Police Department. Thank you so much, Chief. Um, and thank you again to all of our panels, uh, panelists who participated tonight, for all of our community members who are present tonight and who took time out of their evening to be here. Um, in the chat, we posted a link for you to um, take a survey about your experience on the webinar tonight. We're always looking at ways that we could be improving our community engagement efforts, improving our webinars like these. Um, so please take a few moments if you have to um, respond to that survey in the chat. Um, we'll also be emailing that link out. Um, we will also be um, emailing um, to participants tonight the link to review the policies and provide your comments. Um, and we really encourage everyone to take some time to read those policies and provide us some great feedback um, on the presentation you heard tonight and the policy that you review them. Again, thank you so much to everyone for being here tonight, and we look forward to seeing you again uh, at one of our next upcoming engagements. Thank you so much, and have a great evening. Thank you, everybody.